Hello and welcome back. We're out in our large greenhouse and I got my solar system set up and I was kind of tweaking with this while I took it apart. I had taken my water pump. I haven't been able to do any work with my water in here. I am basically relying on passive solar, geothermal, and compost with a little bit of solar power. This pump I do not want to get broken and I have other pumps that I don't want to get broken also so I'm going to hold off on my water system until this negative weather breaks for us so we can get some water in here that's not going to be frozen solid before our system can heat it up. So instead of using water to transfer or harvest the heat off of our compost and transfer it to the floor or our overflow tank, we can passively heat our greenhouse just by having a compost pile in here, but we can also actively heat it with a little bit of solar power we have a new solar fan we had this one this is just a five watt little fan we were using this little fan here and it operates based off of the Sun it is just a little solar fan a five watt solar fan and it runs when there's barely any light coming in here so we really like these fans for the cost they're $15 or less Sometimes you can find cheaper models. Now I used a 12 volt DC waterproof fan that has about 88 cubic feet per minute, which is quite a bit. Now I wanna show this system and how the new fan runs and some airflow. This is going to operate very well. I like the way this works and I'm going to build a large scale one of these for next winter because I don't have quite the material. I've got some straw bales from a local farmer that I could bust up and compost and get some heat off those also, but I'd really like to have wood chips on the back side of my greenhouse just a whole ton of free wood chips from our local tree services but I haven't been able to get it this season so I'm relying on all of these smaller methods as opposed to one solid pile that would burn through the entire winter possibly burn for a whole year or more I myself a cooling fan here too this thing works with just barely any sunlight on it it's pretty neat now I want to bring everybody up here and show what we're doing up close this video is not always the clearest from far away so I wanted to show all of this now I want to show our compost this is sitting about 124 it was about 125 126 and that's pretty warm and that is decent heat for being so cold outside i think we had a high of 10 degrees today it was about four or negative four or something like that this morning when we woke up it was just absolutely freezing and it has been every day you can see the frost all over everything we got frost all over the one shaded side of our greenhouse. It's crazy, but it's definitely warming up and having this running was really cranking some heat out. I have this off right now because this fan is actually decently loud. I wanna show clicking it on. I don't know if you can hear the hum on that, but that seems to be operating very well. I'm happy with that. We've got our little gasket we had made this was kind of bouncing around a little bit so I just used the gasket and I kind of cinched it up with some wire on the back to keep the fan in place I have my wiring just kind of haphazardly put together for a test I just kicked this on a little bit ago and I let it run for a little while to crank some heat out and it was blowing like crazy so I'm gonna show some temps and show the airflow on this this is how I'm operating this. I will keep it covered with a tarp in order to hold a little more heat in there since I'm drawing it off of a pipe here to basically blow it throughout our greenhouse. So I don't want all of the heat just rising right off and rising to the top. I'm kind of scattering it out and basically exchanging with the other side. We have a big old greenhouse and there's a lot of air to heat in here. This is not a surefire method to heat this huge greenhouse, but if we had this running in our small six by 12, this thing would heat it all night, all day without fail. This is one of the best and cheapest methods I've found to heat my greenhouse. We did not spend very much on the ducting or the, any of the piping or anything. Our little pond liner to wrap around it was free. My metal ducting wasn't very expensive. I got that at a discount store. So everything was had cheap. The little fan was 10 bucks. Our solar system, we spent about $100, I believe, on that when we originally purchased it as a kit with our 100 watt solar panel and all of the gadgets to go with. We just didn't get an inverter because we planned on running DC powered stuff and I want to get a larger battery up there, which I have a couple in the garage. I just want to set them up and see how long we can actually run because this doesn't seem to be really pulling any draw off that system. The solar panel's in some good sunlight right now, so I wanna see how long this will run into the night, and I will bring some observations on that also. So we are way back here, and we are seeing airflow from that. 
This is how far we are away, about three, four feet. So I'm finding that very interesting on how much airflow we can actually crank out of here with not a whole lot of energy, you know? This is not a big draw off of this whole system. We were running a 12 volt DC water pump, which definitely is gonna draw a lot more than that tiny little fan. We're heating this bucket up out here to about 70. I saw 70 on there somewhere, yeah. 70 degrees, 60, 70. And that's just with about a foot of gap transfer. Here, sitting about 100. I saw 104 there. Nine. We're close to 100. We're between 80 and 100. But the pile was 120-ish. So that's decent temps for blowing out air into our pile i turned that off just so i could get a good reading because it's kind of fluctuating a little bit when i have the fan running because i think that's such a high volume fan but i'm really going to transfer a lot of heat i just don't know how fast it'll burn this littler pile out i have plenty of room to grow and expand my pile outward so i can connect another metal pipe to this and basically just extend the pile and have my pipe come out right here and it would continue to blow and it would allow me to have a much larger compost pile and i had stuck all these rocks around here i'm going to use some of my egg paint and paint them black just to kind of absorb more heat and aid in the transfer of heat and insulation of this i have a ton of cardboard underneath my whole pile just to insulate it from the floor i got a couple layers of clean cardboard for insulation and to soak up any nutrient value to kind of hold it in the pile and allow it all to compost properly I'm gonna kick this back on I'm just gonna let that run as long as it will I'm gonna kind of observe it throughout the night to see how long that will last with our small 12 volt battery I have a car size 12 volt battery and I have a couple of them so I can have a bigger storage system I just don't know where I'm gonna put a couple large car batteries so I got to kind of figure that out and I'm always working with these systems so if anybody has any ideas for bettering this system I know I don't have my water flowing through it I'm just using air right now because that's what I can do and it's definitely warm in here. Our thermometer up there says 50 degrees, that's in the sun. Our one at the other end says 50 degrees also. So we are just sitting 50 degrees when it is about 10 degrees outside. That's why we got so much frost and everything. We're transferring all our heat and all of the moisture sticking and becoming frozen. And this is a short and long-term heating solution. Depending on the size of your pile and how you're harvesting it and the consistency and the density of the material that you're composting directly dictates how long it will burn and the ratios of carbon to nitrogen that you have. We've just kind of experimented with this. This is just kind of leaves and rubbish that we had underneath our trees and stuff. We threw all this together the other day and watered it in. We put some wood ash. I did not use any urine on this pile because I didn't want that in my greenhouse. And I wasn't sure how well the wood ash alone would work. I think I put a couple leaves of comfrey in the middle of that chopped up comfrey. The wood ash definitely worked to inoculate our pile and act as an activator for the pile. It got it cooking. It was about 124, 125 degrees. We started losing a few degrees once I took my tarp off. So that directly shows me that the tarp holds heat and when we started pumping air, it started going down also by a degree or two over the 10 minutes that I was watching it. So that's really not that bad. And it's such a small pile that it will draw a lot of heat. So I'm concerned that it will not last very long. But since I got this going, I'm going to let it burn as long as it will. And I'm going to create a larger pile while I'm still accumulating materials. And I'm going to continue all of this through the next winter. So all of this stuff I'm accumulating isn't going to waste. We like to recycle and reuse every everything and everything we get is usually had at a discount and that's the way to do it because there's no sense in spending a ton of money on something you can do or get for cheaper. I want to thank everybody for watching this video and checking out our new little compost heating system 2.0. It's a redesign. We're only using air to transfer it, no water. So if anybody has any questions on building something like this, definitely reach out, drop them in the comments below and we'd love to get back to you.